Perfect. Awesome. Well, thank you all for joining us today. We're going to talk about how to generate multifamily deal flow, uh, both on market and off market. So I'm going to walk you through our entire process from start to finish. Um, if you're interested in watching previous webinars, you could go on our YouTube channel and you could see all the previous webinars we've done. But anyway, uh, let's talk about how to generate deal flow in multifamily real estate. Um, before I start, I want to introduce myself for those that don't know me. My name is Abbas Mohammed. I uh, started in real estate back in 2017 as a real estate agent, failed miserably the first year. I was um, literally cold calling for 12 hours a day looking for clients and didn't get a single client for a year. But then afterwards, I uh, started doing pretty well and got multiple multiple uh, listings and started growing the business by hiring virtual assistants. And so basically within four and a half years, I became top 50 agents nationwide with Remax. I had 25 virtual assistants full time and uh, was doing pretty well in business. But then I started, I was paying a lot of money in taxes. And so I started um, looking at ways where I could invest my, my capital. And so that's how I found out eventually about multifamily. I wasn't really interested in single family investing. I wasn't interested in stocks or crypto or anything, uh, any of these other assets. But then I found out about multifamily and how you get tax benefits, you get appreciation, you get, you get um, cash flow. And so I decided to go all in. And so uh, since then, we've, uh, we've bought basically 37 million last year. And uh, by the end of this year, we'll probably end up at about 54, $55 million in assets under management. And my target is to continue to grow that. So anyway, enough about me. Let's get on with the topic. How do you generate deal flow in multifamily? So the first thing I want to point out is that before you even contact brokers, th this is super important, you want to you want to be knowledgeable you want to be able to talk to a broker and not have them think that you're a brand new person to the business so uh, part of that is you're going to have to basically have you know sort of your requirements about what type of deals you are even interested in so the first thing i'll tell you to do is you want to focus on what deals you're interested in and which markets my number one uh, focus is if you're brand new to the business, my number one focus for you would be to choose the markets that you're interested in. We have a webinar on how to choose markets where I go into super, you know, super deep details. But the most important thing is you want to choose markets because if you're just if you're just trying to contact everybody, you're going to spend hundreds of hours and you're not going to accomplish much. So choose the right market for me. When I first chose a market, I decided to choose Dallas Fort Worth for many, many different reasons. Now, you could choose one market. You could also choose multiple markets at the same time. Although, if you're just starting out, I've noticed personally, it's very hard to go after multiple markets because there is so much, you know, so much to do in every market in order to build up your, your foundation. You've got to find um, you know, contractors. You have to find property management companies. You have to find brokers. You have to find partners that are boots on the ground. And so there's just a lot of work. And so my recommendation is don't try to choose too many markets and stretch yourself too thin. Just choose one market and then just kind of go from there. The second thing you want to be dialed in on besides choosing the right market is what type of property are you going after? Are you going after an A-class deal, a B-class deal, or a C-class deal? Now, there's also a D-class, but nobody really talks about D-class deals. These are you know, almost run down properties. But anyway, the point is, you want to talk to brokers and, and let them know, hey, I'm interested in, in B-class properties, I'm interested in C-class, or I'm interested in A-class. If you're starting and you're brand new, the chances of you getting an A-class deal, which is like a brand new 2020 built or whatever it is, 2022, um, is very difficult. So I would say don't even try to go after A-class at the beginning, either go with B-class or C-class. Most likely, if you're brand new to the business, if you're brand new to buying multifamily apartments, then your best bet is to go after C-class in the beginning, and then later on you could go after B-class or A-class as you continue to grow. The other thing you want to be super dialed in on is what vintage are you buying? And again, part of this is you want to understand the industry lingo, meaning if a broker says, you know, what vintage are you looking for? You want to understand that that means age range of the property. So you want to understand, hey, do I want to buy 1970s? Do I want to buy 1980s, 1990s, whatever that number is? you have to be dialed in on the vintage of the properties you're interested in. Because if you don't know, then they'll send you everything. Or they might say, hey, this guy doesn't know what he's doing. I'm not going to send anything at all. So you want to be very dialed in on what vintage you're interested in. Us personally, we go after B-class properties uh, most of the time, B and C, but mostly B. 
We go after 1980 plus, 1980 to 2000, and uh, we go after value add deals. So that's my requirement when it comes to these. And then um, we focus on the Dallas Fort Worth market. I like, you know, I like neighborhoods with $40,000 of income or higher. I want schools nearby. I don't want it to be on the outskirts. So I really know my criteria. So when I talk to a broker and I'm going through this criteria, you know, they might have a deal that they're ready to show me or may, they may not, but then, you know, they understand that I know what I'm looking for. And so if they find a property that matches that criteria, then it's easier for them to connect the dots and say, hey, you know what, I got to talk to a boss about this one because this fits right in his circle. So uh, you want to choose, hey, do I want to go after core, core plus, value add, opportunistic, meaning heavy value add deals. Um, if you're brand new to the business, again, I would not go after heavy value add deals because they require a lot of experience and a lot of knowledge and a lot of things could go wrong. Uh, value add deals tend to kind of be the easiest and then core plus and core, you know, these are kind of like a class deals where the returns are not very high, but it's also, you know, it's a stabilized asset, newer asset. So these are kind of, uh, these are especially good for big institutions and, and you know, people that have already scaled up significantly. So if you're just starting out, your best bet is to start with value add or heavy value add. Anyway, so moving on from that, besides getting your criteria dialed in, the next thing that you wanna do, these are the different ways where you can source deals. Number one is you could go and network with other sponsors. So you could go to real estate events, multifamily events, whatever sector you're in, whether it's retail, industrial, um, office, whatever it is, you could go to these events and you'll find people like myself and other people that have bought multifamily deals. And then at those events, you could you know, create relationships. And then from those relationships, um, you'll find that a lot of times these people are not just buying, but they're also selling. So if they're selling, you could basically get those deals directly from these sponsors. Having said that, most of the time they have brokers, obviously, so you'll have to go through the broker. But at the end of the day, if you're competing with someone else, and you know the, the seller and the other person doesn't know the seller, if everything else was equal or close to equal, you will end up winning just because of that personal relationship. So uh, whether you get to uh, work with the person directly or you have to go through a broker, either way, I would still build relationships with sponsors because again, if we're bidding on the same deal and I, I know the person very well because we've met multiple times, then I'm much more likely to win that deal over somebody else. So networking, super, super important in this business. Um, another thing you could do is you could do cold calling. Um, cold calling and mailers. I will say this though, with cold calling and mailers, and we're going to talk more about this later on, they, from my experience, they generally don't work very well if somebody has over 50 units because they were usually more sophisticated and you're not going to be able to basically get a, get a big deal off of a cold call or a mailer. Um, they usually tend to work better for smaller properties. So just kind of keep that in mind. Uh, property management companies, they're a great source for off-market deals because a lot of times if somebody's looking to sell a property one you know they'll they'll tell their property management company about it and then that property management company might have other people that they're working with that might want to buy that property so property management companies a lot of times uh, know what properties are going to be selling way before everybody else does so uh, they're a very very good um, very good resource we're going to talk about how you build relationships with those in a bit but they're a great resource and then finally, my favorite method out of all of these is to go through brokers. And so when you build broker relationships, you're going to get a lot of deals, more deals than you can handle. Um, and so in my opinion, you could go and, and do a lot of work with all of these other methods, which I, you know, I also recommend. I mean, I, I still network. I still build relationships with management companies. But my number one way of getting deals is through brokers. It's, it's just the easiest, fastest, most convenient for you. Um, so that, that's my recommended method. Having said that, Let's go through these different methods. So, you know, obviously networking, we don't, know, we don't need to go into too much. You just go to real estate events, you meet other, uh, other uh, sponsors and other syndicators and other buyers, and that's how you build these relationships. But moving on from that, cold calling slash mailers, it's uh, pretty simple. There's multiple ways to go about doing this. A lot of people have done it in, in single family, although in multifamily, it's a little bit different. In single family, a lot of people own their homes in their direct name. So finding their email and finding their phone number is super easy. You use uh, websites like batchleads.com and you could get everybody's information very, very quickly. In multifamily and commercial real estate, for risk reasons, people put their assets in LLCs. And so it's kind of, it's, it's a little harder to track their information. And so uh, to do that, we use a website called CoStar, which I'm gonna show you how to use right now. 
But basically, cold calling and mailers, they're again, they're good if you're looking for 50 units at a time or less. So these are more, you know, mom and pop type of owners. Um, you want to choose the right market, go through CoStar, and then use cold calls, mailers, postcards, whatever it is, in order to generate those, uh, th those databases. So I'm going to show you how to do that right now, actually, live on, on the webinar. So what you want to do is, if you don't have CoStar and you want to build your database that way, then in my opinion, CoStar is probably the best way to do it. We're not sponsored by CoStar. We actually use it, which is why I recommend it. But basically with CoStar, it's CoStar.com. You go sign up. It's about $1,400 a month. And you know you might hear that number and, and say, you know what, that's, that's a lot of money. But the truth is, if you're looking to buy deals and you want to source them off market, then that's just part of your marketing cost, basically. So the way it works, if you decide to go through CoStar, right, I'm going to show you how to use it, is it's, it's very simple. You basically, you know, uh, no thanks. You basically click on properties, click on multifamily, um, and then you choose which market you're interested in, uh, minimum units. So let's just say I want to go between 50 to, let's say, 200 units. From there on, basically, once you choose the unit sizes and all that sort of stuff, I'm going to go after garden style apartment complexes. From there on, it's, it's fairly simple. You just click on owners and then it shows you all of the owners and it gives you um, their data and all that sort of stuff as well. You could export that list um, right there. So you could export it. And then once you export the list, um, you could basically start sending them uh, mailers, postcards, letters. Um, you also get a lot of times you get their um, the true owner's information. So you could, if you scroll down a lot of times, they have their phone number in this case. Uh, contacts, you go to contacts, let's see. Yeah, you see it right there. So it has their, their phone number, it has their address. Um, I think if you click on this, it will also give you the email. So you could export all of this data and you could just do it that way. So this is the best way if you wanna go after deals off market less than 50 units. However, like I said, if you're trying to go after 50 units, this is not the right method to follow. But if you're under 50 units, this is, this is a great, great start. Um, having said that, let's get out of this and let's go back to our presentation. How do we exit full screen? There we go. So we already went through the cold calls, CoStar. Uh, the other way is you could go through property management companies. So again, property management companies, a lot of times they know who's going to be selling and who's not going to be selling prior to anybody else almost. And so the way you want to do that is you want to search properties in the desired locations on apartments.com. And then you want to build a list of all of the different property management companies in that area. From there on, you start calling, emailing, building a relationship. And then once you build the relationship, then you start getting these deals through them. But again, that relationship has to be built over time. You have to contact them frequently. But I'm going to show you how to do this live as well. So you go on apartments.com. This is probably the best website to do this. Whenever we're buying a property and I'm trying to run comps, I go through apartments.com as well because it gives us um, data very quickly. And then we start visiting the properties in person and call and all that sort of stuff to get the actual rents. But anyway, for this, let's say I'm looking to buy deals in Dallas, right? So I'm going to type in Dallas, Texas. I do a search. Oops, I'm sorry. Let's go back. I do a search. So obviously it gives you a very large market. Let's say I'm just going to go in and I'm interested in buying properties in this little area right here, for example, right there. So what you want to do is you want to click on where it says type and select apartments. So that way it only shows you the apartments. And then you just, you know, you just select the property management companies. So as you can see right there, these two deals are not listed. Actually, this one is not listed with a management company because it doesn't have a logo up here. But then you look at these two other deals and they're listed with Odin Properties. This one is AMBO, uh, Lincoln Property Company. So let's just click on this as an example. And Odin. So Odin Properties are right there. You could look them up on, on Google and basically find all of their contact info. So Odin Properties right over there. Visit their website. Actually, that's the property website. But you could visit the website, basically find it on Google and call them and basically say, look, I'm interested in buying deals in this area. Um, I wanted to meet a property management company. And then while you're meeting with the company, then you also ask them, hey, do you know of anybody that's looking to sell a property? The reason that they would give you these leads is because if you buy a property that they give to you, they expect that you're going to keep them as the management company. So if they're managing this property and whoever owns this deal is looking to sell, 
and they give you the lead, they're expecting you to keep them on as the management company after that purchase is done, which is why they're incentivized to basically, you know, try to find a buyer themselves. So that's how you do that. Again, build a database. You want to build a database anyway, because anytime you're interested in buying a property, you want to contact multiple property management companies. So you're going to need to do it anyway. You might as well do it for this and start contacting them to see if they could give you any deals. But now this is, this is all small stuff. Really the best way to, to buy deals is to go through brokers. And I'm going to tell you exactly how we do it step by step. But before we do that, if you're interested in seeing future deal flow deals that we are investing in deals that we're buying directly, um, what you want to do is you want to create a free investor account. Once you create that investor account, you're going to get every deal that we're going to be working on in the future. So if I'm buying a deal that I'm investing in personally, uh, a multifamily deal in Dallas or any other market that we're going in and expecting to, you know, say a 2x, 2x the investments or whatever the case is, um, then you'll get notified and that way you can decide to invest or not invest in those deals. Even if you're not very interested in investing passively, I would say make an account so that way you can see what type of deals we go after um, ourselves. So you could go to that, scan that QR code or go to this website modelequity.com forward slash invest. You can make that account. It's going to take literally like one minute max. And then once you make that account, then you're going to have access to our future deals forever. So if you're interested in that, definitely make an account as soon as possible. But moving on, let's go back to this and go over. Oh, what did I do? I messed this up somehow. Let's go back to this slideshow right there. There we go. Perfect. So the first thing that you want to do whenever you're trying to get deals from brokerages is you want to sign up on broker websites. I'm going to give you some of the major brokerage websites out there that specialize in commercial. And what you want to do is you want to go on all of these different websites. There's, there's a ton more. You could Google it, multifamily um, investment brokerages, multifamily real estate, whatever, and you'll find all of these different brokerages. The point is on each one of these, you're going to make an account. And then when you make an account, it's going to ask you, hey, what market are you interested in? what vintage, how many units, what type of deals are you interested in? And so based on that, anytime, you know, Marcus and Millichap has a deal, they'll send that over to you. Anytime CBRE has a deal, they'll send that over to you. Whatever the case is, all these different companies. So you want to make sure that you sign up on all of these different websites. It's going to take you a lot of work. But again, that's part of the business. If you're interested in looking at deals, this is the way to do it. So you want to sign up on all of these different ones. There is a lot more. You want to sign up on the small ones, on the big ones. One mistake I will tell you to not make that I made personally is when we started is we went on all these websites and we basically set a very tight requirement about what type of deals that we're, we're interested in. We're like, hey, we only want 50 units plus. I only want to be in this specific neighborhood and this specific neighborhood. But then later on, as I wanted to expand, you know, what type of deals I'm interested in, um, I had to go back to all of these different websites and then I had to update them one by one. And it took, it took us a lot of time and a lot of hours. My suggestion as you make this is don't set the filter too tight. Um, keep it as broad as possible. Worst case scenario, if they email you about a deal that you're not interested in, it's all automated. So you just delete the email and you move on with your life. Um, so you want to get more emails than less emails, right? Because you might find a property that's slightly out of your preference, but it might still work out. So again, keep these as open as, as possible. You don't want to be too tight. Moving on from that. So after you make your account on all these different websites, by the way, they're pretty much all free. I, I, I can't think of a single one where you have to pay any money to sign up. So they're all free. So there's no reason not to sign up. You could take a picture of this or, or later on you could watch the recording. But anyway, besides that, the other thing that you want to do is you could also go on CoStar. And I'm going to show you how that works because a lot of times you might have small brokerages that are specific to a market that you might not find on Google. Um, so if you go on CoStar or LoopNet, you're going to be able to find all of these smaller brokerages that might do, you know, they might sell one or two properties a month, but they're still a player in the market. So if you go on CoStar, you'll be able to find those. I'll show you how to do that. But after you, you know, after you choose a market, you want to go on CoStar and you want to build a database of all of the different brokers that exist in that market. And I'll tell you why you want to do that in a bit. The reason you want to do that is because you want to start calling them and emailing them in order to start getting their deal flow. Um, again, if you sign up on these websites, you are going to get you are going to get the automated emails, which is great. But besides that, if you're calling and and you're building these relationships with these brokers, 
you're also going to start getting off market deals that are just they're not automated emails a lot of times if, if you build a solid relationship and somebody wants to actually work with you um, they will start sending you deals so don't just focus on the brokerage as a whole you want to focus on the individual real estate brokers as well uh, my recommendation i learned this from someone that um, that now owns about 11 billion dollars of real estate when i first got in um, he said something very important that has helped me out significantly. And he said, look, whenever you're starting, you don't want to focus on the senior brokers. You want to focus on the brand new junior brokers. And the reason is um, the senior broker who's been doing it for five years, seven years, 10 years, whatever, they've already got a lot of relationships. They've already got a lot of clients. So if they have a good deal, they're not going to send it to you. They're going to send it to somebody that they've already worked with many, many times. Um, you want to focus on junior brokers because they're just getting into the business they're trying to prove themselves and then as they grow in the business and as you grow in the business you guys both grow together and then that relationship basically blossoms into a much much larger uh, business relationship later on so um, highly recommend you always focus on the junior brokers and i'm going to show you how to find uh, these newer brokers in, in a few uh, few steps so after you find all these brokers you build a database you want to start adding everyone on social media again these are people and for people to do business with you they have to like you they have to know you they have to trust you and so if you only show up when they have a deal they're probably going to forget about you so you want to add everybody on social media you want to post on social media regularly about real estate about what you're doing um you know so that way they they remember you because if they forget about you then they'll move on and they'll give the deals to somebody else so very very important that you do that you also want to fly to events. Um, you want to invite them to lunches. You want to invite them to dinners. You want to send them gifts. Um, the guy I just mentioned who owns about $11 billion of real estate, he literally spends between a million to $2 million a year on brokers, uh, taking them to trips, dinners, all these different things, gifts. And so obviously if you're just starting and myself included, uh, we don't have the budget to do anything like that. However, you could still afford to fly in to meet them at events. You could still afford to take them to a lunch or a dinner or send smaller gifts, right? Um, they appreciate that. So you always want to be top of mind by, you know, showing up and being at the same events that they're at. So um, also you want to be fast and nimble. If they're sending you a deal, this is, this is a mistake I see all the time. Um, sometimes a broker might send you a deal. You might, you might not be interested and you completely ignore the broker because you don't want to say no. And to me, I think that's a very, very big mistake. If somebody sends you a deal, especially if it's off market, you know, you want to act very, very quickly. If you're interested, then you want to stay up all night, underwrite the deal, look at the property, um, fly out literally the next morning if you have to, fly out the same day if you have to go take a look at it, because they like to see that you're committed, you take a lot of action. If they send you a deal and it takes you a week just to respond with a no or a yes, then they're just not going to send you a deal anymore. They're going to send it to somebody else who's going to move very, very quickly. Um, I remember a few months ago, somebody sent me a deal in Phoenix. And literally while we we're on the phone, I'm like, hey, I'm booking the flight. I'll come see it literally tomorrow. And so throughout, throughout the day, he kept texting me. He's like, hey, are you sure you're actually coming tomorrow? Should I actually show up at the property at nine in the morning or, or are you kidding? I'm like, dude, I'm literally coming tomorrow at nine o'clock. Just be there, I'll meet you at the property. And so you wanna make sure that you're fast. You wanna make sure that you're nimble. Don't take too long to respond to people. Um, and they'll appreciate that and they'll keep sending you deals. Even if you say no, giving them a no is better than a no response at all. Um, and then follow through on commitments. If you find a deal that they send you and you like the deal and you tell them, look, we're going to be closing on this property or I'm going to write an offer or whatever the case is, you want to make sure that you don't have any excuses as to why you don't follow through on, on a closing, you don't follow through on an offer or whatever the case is, unless you get presented with different data. But don't waste their time. Like if you're, if you're not interested in a property, just tell them, look, I'm not interested in this property. And that's, that's fine even after you see it. But if you see a property and you want to write an offer, and you tell them, hey, I'll, I'll give you an offer by this afternoon or tonight, whatever the case is, you want to actually send them that offer. Even if it gets rejected, even if the offer price is too low, I've sent, I've sent offers that were too low and that got rejected and that's fine. Uh, but I, I would still rather send an offer. If I'm interested in a property, I would still rather send an offer that gets rejected than not send an offer at all. So follow through on commitments. Um, they want to know that, hey, if, if you're saying something, you'll actually do it. So let's go on CoStar again. I'm going to show you how to build the database of brokers. This is super important. Uh, I'm going to show you the database we've built. If you look at this, 
in every market we're interested in, we build a database that has literally, I mean, you, you look at this, it's, it's insane how big this is. Uh, we don't just add the brokers, we add the assistants, we add the staff at the office, we wanna add everybody. And then all of these people get added on social media, they get added to the email database, they get added on all these different things because if I have an offer, I send the offer to say, I don't know, Jay, and Jay goes to talk to Kevin about the offer. I want Kevin to say, oh yeah, I know this guy. I see him on social media all the time. I, I, you know, I see him at events all the time. So you wanna make sure that you establish a name brand. And so the way you do that is you add everybody on social media, you add everybody to your email database. Um, you go to all these different events and you, and you meet everybody. But again, when you're focusing on a broker, you wanna focus on the junior brokers, which I'm gonna show you how to find out in a bit. But if you go on CoStar, Again, we're not being sponsored by CoStar, but I, I think it's a great tool. We use it all the time. It's a little expensive at 1400 a month, but it's worth it. You know, if you're in the business um, and you want to grow, then you have to, you have to pay for these different tools. So I'm just going to put in the codes. Every time you log in, you have to have a code, which is kind of annoying. But the way it works is you click on professionals. And then, you know, you choose basically here, you choose what type of brokerage you want to go after, right? So they've got these different brokerages. And then from there on, you choose who do you want to contact? Do you want to contact a broker, a consultant, developer, whatever the case is? So obviously you would choose a broker in this scenario. And then afterwards, you choose the location and then you get a list of all of the different people. Let me see if I can, uh, I have someone that does this for us, uh, investment sales. There we go. So investment sales, investment ownership. Uh, let's do that and then we're going to do broker and then let's go on location so then you can choose the market uh, let me see if i can just i'm just going to choose i don't know whatever it doesn't matter i'm going to choose this market for example and then we're going to click on get results so th you see in this case you get all of these different brokers all their names their phone numbers uh, where they're located their addresses the whole thing so you want to build this database so that way, eventually, it looks like this. It looks like you've got the, the market, you got the name, you got the email, the company name, what role they have right now. And again, these roles change, so it might not matter too much. The office phone number, the cell phone, and then I always put a note section, just in case I wanna write some notes. Later on, once you start getting deals from them, on the deals themselves, what you're gonna notice is that they also have the other staff members in the office. And so, you know, with that, you could update the list. So that way you could add the staff to this, but, but you wanna add all of these different, um, all of these different uh, brokers and all these different agents. Another thing that you wanna do is if you're interested in one market, my opinion is you wanna reach out to brokers and agents in other markets nearby as well. So if I'm looking at Dallas, as you can see, I'm not building just the Dallas database. Uh, I'm also building the Houston database, the San Antonio database, um, Abilene, Austin, Lubbock, you know, all these different markets. And the reason behind that is because somebody in Austin might have a deal in Dallas. Um, most of the time it's, it's rare. Usually the Austin people sell Austin deals, but sometimes I've seen this happen uh, quite frequently where somebody in a different market might get an odd listing and they might try to sell it. So if you're the only person in their database that that's in Dallas, for example, then you'll have an advantage because other people didn't reach out to this person and they're not on the database. So, um, so always try to contact all of these different brokers in the different markets that are adjacent or close by to the market that you're actually interested in. Uh, moving on, so after you build a database like this, what you want to do is you want to send them a quick email. So as you can see, after we build a database, we send emails one by one. I'm sure you could automate it um, where you basically keep it simple. You just say, hey, this, hey, Tana, whatever. I got your information online. I am so and so. We're looking for deals that are so and so. Please add me to your future database. Just keep it super simple. And so that way they know who you are. They see your name. Um, even if they don't reply, it doesn't really matter. The point is you want to just get your name out there. So send an email to everybody to make sure that you get added on their database. Um, and then once you start getting deals, so this is important. Like we said, all of these brokers are, are on this deal, for example. This is just a snippet of an OM. Uh, what you want to focus on is you want to focus on the, the newer people. The newer people are usually put on the at the bottom or you know the bottom right. So in this case, um, I believe Brian Murphy is probably the newest broker out of all of these guys. And then it would be Will Ziegler and then Brian O'Boyle um, and then Jacob Anderson and then Richard Furst, kind of the senior guy. So when I'm starting out, I'm going to reach out to everybody. 
But the person I would focus on the most is Brian Murphy. If I could become friends with Brian and Will um, and take him out to lunches, take him out to dinners, and they have a deal that I'm interested in, if I submit an offer, Brian is going to go up to Richard and go to Jacob and go to Brian and say, guys, you know, this buyer I've met many times, he's, you know, he's committed, he's going to close on this property, he's going to vouch for you because if he brings a buyer that closes on a deal, they basically get brownie points and, and so and so they look better in, in the brokerage because they're newer. So I would I would say always focus on the newer brokers for that reason. They're going to vouch for you, they're going to put their name on the line, especially if they like you and they trust you. Um, this is an example. And also, you want to treat them like friends. For example, like this is me reaching out to a broker. Actually, today I'm going to be flying to Dallas um, this Friday. He says, hey, are you open for lunch Friday? You're arriving today. I'm like, no, I'll be arriving at two on Friday. Definitely open if you have time. Um, and then we're basically just setting up a lunch, a lunch meeting, right? Um, I'm like, hey, I'll just be there at 3.30. So again, you want to talk to these people um, as your friends because that's what they become. If, if you can't get them to be your friends, it's going to be very, very difficult for you to get deals from them. Um, I can tell you this broker specifically, he was a junior broker um, a year ago. And he gave me, um, uh, I, at the time, I bought a $30 million deal through him. I had never bought a deal that large. He went and vouched uh, for me in front of the seller, in front of the other brokers. And he said, listen, you guys got to go with this guy's offer. And he put his name on the line for me. And so that, that was huge. And since then, now he's become more of a senior broker. And there's other newer people underneath him and all that sort of stuff. And so anytime this guy gets a deal, literally while he's signing a listing agreement, completely off market, he starts texting me, hey, boss, I think this deal um, is within your criteria, if it fits my criteria. He knows what I'm looking for. And so I get a deal almost pretty much every two weeks or every month from this one person alone. So if you could build three, four, five of these guys, you're going to get a lot of off market deals. But again, you want to become friends with them. You want to follow through on your commitments. You want to be fast, especially if you're brand new. You want to be very, very quick in your responses. And you want to show that you're actually committed to this. So again, if you're interested in seeing future deal flow, um, deals that we're investing in, um, highly recommend you make an account on modelequity.com forward slash invest. I'm gonna show you how to do that. And in the meantime, while I'm showing you how to do this, if you have any questions, put, post them in the chat and I'll be happy to answer any questions you guys have. But basically, if you're interested in investing with us in future deals, or maybe looking at future deals that we have, um, and you go to that link, on the website, you could just put in your name, email, phone number, and it's going to ask you some questions. Are you accredited? Are you a citizen? How much you might be interested in investing? How you heard about us? And then you basically join the club. And from there on, anytime we have a deal, you get priority access to it. And um, you know, if we have a deal that you're interested in investing in, we'll obviously give you priority over anybody else. So highly recommend you sign up. I'm going to post the link in the chat. In the meantime, if you have any questions, um, post the questions in the chat and I'll be happy to answer those questions for you. Hey Ian, thank you for joining us. If someone wants to do seller financing and find motivated sellers, do you still recommend this would be a good way to find deals? Um, Armin, when you say um, when you say that, I would if you're looking to do seller financing and find motivated sellers, if you're buying them yourself, then yes, I would still recommend going through brokers. I still think that's the best way to do it. Um, but if you're going to be wholesaling the deals, then I would not be going through brokers. Maggie is saying, do I have to be an accredited investor? No. So if you're investing with us, you don't, you don't have to be accredited as long as um, basically you're sophisticated, which means you know what you're doing. So if you sign up on the website, um, you just have to make sure that after you sign up, you book a call with me. It's a 15 minute call. There's nothing to sell you. It's just to get to know you basically. So after you sign up, just book a call and that way we could have a 15 minute conversation. So I'm going to post the, the website link in the chat. It's modelequity.com forward slash invest. You can make an account right there. Um, any other questions, post them in the chat and I'll be happy to answer any questions you guys might have. Anybody else? Anybody else? Um, let's see. Yeah, if you're buying them for yourself, highly recommend you go through brokers. It's the easiest, fastest way. If you're looking to wholesale, then you want to go, you know, and try to get them through cold calls and mailers and, you know, property management companies, maybe. Um, but, you know, if you're buying for yourself, then that's not a problem. I hope this was helpful to you guys. You know, I, I, 
spend spend a good amount of time every week to to um, set this up. So I hope it actually helps you guys. Um, how do you buy for me? Is it a co-investment? So what we do, Joe, is basically we buy these multifamily deals. And if you're interested in investing in these deals alongside us, we manage the deal for everybody. Um, so it's a passive investment for you. So you get passive income, you get depreciation on your taxes, and then also you get appreciation when we sell the deal. Um, so if you're interested in, in passively investing with us in the deals, then you just make an account and then you'll get notified whenever we have a future deal. You're never obligated to obviously invest, but we'll let you know, hey, we have a deal. This is what we're buying right now. Um, and if you're interested, you can join us for 50,000 or 100,000, whatever the amount is that you choose. It would be, you would be joining as a passive investor. Thank you, Subahin. I appreciate that. I, I butchered your name. My apologies. I suck with that. Um, D, I, I personally only focus on 50 units and higher um, just because it's easier to manage. And, um, you know, I, I would rather not do smaller deals. So that's what we focus on. Minimum investment is usually 50,000. Every deal is different, but usually it's 50,000 plus. You're welcome. Um, okay, so I got uh, two other questions. How do you go about assessing the maintenance maintenance needs of an apartment when you have little to no managerial contracting experience? Don't want to be taken advantage of by an opportunistic seller. Um, so Jordan, um, I would say if you don't have experience ma uh, managing uh, properties or you don't have experience understanding, um, you know, the condition of the property, it's very simple. You basically Prior to getting under contract, you could always go with a contractor. Obviously, they're not going to do official inspections, but they could take a look at it with you and, and you know, say, hey, visually, I'm looking at this problem, looking at that problem. Uh, but after you get under contract, you basically hire a, an inspection company. They usually cost about 5000 and they go in and they just inspect everything. They inspect the roof, the pool, the exteriors, the interiors, the whole thing. Uh, the plumbing is very important. So they inspect everything for you and they tell you, listen, based on our inspections, this is how much this would cost. And so based on that, you could decide, hey, is this too much or are there too many problems or, or, or am I okay with this deal and am I ready to go? Uh, Vivian is saying, once I find a deal, will there be, will there be resources available for financing? So Vivian, good question. You always want to make sure that you get your financing in order prior to you ever... Um, you know, getting a deal. So what I like to do, again, these properties, the financing is based on the income of the property. So it's not based on you as a person. So what you want to do is you want to find um, multifamily lenders in the market that you're interested in. And then when you find the multifamily lender, they'll just give you the different loan programs. And so when you go find a property, you just basically match the business plan on the property to the loan program that you're interested in, and then you close on the deal. It's, it's that simple. Um, but you have to be very careful about which financing program that you go with. I believe we've done a webinar on financing before. So if you're interested in that, go through my YouTube channel and you'll find, uh, you'll find that video. It's like an hour long webinar we did on financing. Um, Dee's asking, do you only invest in Dallas or all over the US? So um, I only invest in Dallas right now, although eventually I will expand to other markets, but Dallas is easily my favorite. There's a lot of population growth. Rent growth has been off the charts. It's been, it's been crazy and uh, there's a lot of appreciation. And so that's, that's why I like the Dallas market a lot. Also, it's a very landlord friendly, um, it's a very landlord friendly state. And so because of that, we don't have to worry about evictions taking too long and all these other things that you have to deal with in California. So I live in California, but I would never invest in California uh, because people are leaving, rent is going down out here. So it's just not a good combo. Joe's asking, can we get our money back anytime we want? So um, I'm assuming you mean if you invest in our deals. Um, so you get your money basically whenever we sell the deal. So if we buy a deal, you know, we go in, we're, we're, rehabbing the deal we're increasing the income so that we can increase the value and then three to five years later the business plan is to sell the deal and so that way you could get your money back and you get the profits um, and at that point you get your money back alongside us so we all get our money back at the same time um, but part of that is you also get cash flow throughout the holding period so if we buy a deal right now you know over the next year you might be getting five percent six percent in cash flow and so that cash flow is kind of like a secondary source of income and then you make the majority of the money on the back end when we sell the deal. Hope that answers your question. Any other questions, post them in the chat. Happy to answer. 
Is there a membership fee to join your club? Not at all. It's completely free. Um, you don't have to pay anything. And once you join, you start seeing future deals. You also get a lot of educational stuff. We also have a free ebook that you could get, 30 pages, uh, completely free. So we do a lot of free education, a lot of free content. And then when we find a deal, we do a webinar where we, where we explain the deal and why we're investing in the deal. And then at that point, you decide, do I want to invest or do I not want to invest? But no, it's completely free. You don't have to pay anything at all. Um, Armin is asking, how do you automate your out-of-state investing? Do you manage them yourself or how do you find the right property managers? Um, Armin, great question. I believe we have a webinar on property management companies, but if we don't, I'll make sure I host one because it's super important. Uh, basically, what we do is we find third-party property management companies that would hire employees to uh, you know, be at the property. So uh, the way I do that is I go on apartments.com Let's say I'm interested in, for example, I'm interested in, in buying an, in, in this market. Uh, what I would want to do is I want to see, okay, who's, who's managing deals in this market? So in this case, Odin is managing deals. So then I would go fly out to, to this market and I would go visit their properties and see, hey, are their properties performing well? Are they not performing well? Uh, I'm going to call their properties and see, do they answer the phone quickly? Are they, you know, are they, um, you know, are they diligent? So you want to make sure you do your due diligence. I have, I have a webinar on, on, on this, but if I don't, I'll make sure I make one um, later on this month, hopefully. So it's not automated. It's never automated, especially when you're buying deals like this, like we're buying 10 million, 12 million, 15, 20, 30, whatever million dollar deals. We don't want to automate it. We want to make sure that everything is, is um, done correctly. Do you have any general thoughts, concerns on going on the FSA loan live on site route? Um, Jordan, explain what you mean by that. I've never heard of FSA loan. When is, ta when is tax time? What do I get from you to file? So you get what's called a K-1. A K-1 basically shows all of your on paper depreciation. So you take that K-1, you take it to your CPA, and then the CPA is basically able to um, do whatever they do in order to hopefully reduce your taxes. I'm not a CPA, so see if this applies to you. Just to give you guys an example, though, last year in 2021, um, I invested a lot of money, obviously, in, in the real estate. And so I was able to get seven, roughly about $795,000 in, in deductions. So $795,000. That $795,000 of deductions got me to uh, get a $258,000 refund from the from the federal and state IRS um, because of the deductions I got. So I got a $258,000 refund every other year prior to that. I used to pay a lot of money at the end of the year. But in this case, because of my depreciation, I got a quarter of a million dollars basically in, in refund from the IRS. Uh, let's see, let's see. Do you have a team to manage the apartments? Yeah, so in every deal we always have, I, I always have uh, my uh, main partner, his name is TJ. And so his job is to manage the assets, but then we also hire a property management company. So every deal we have a property management company and that company's job is to go out there and basically manage the deal on a day-to-day -day basis. And then we manage the, you know, we manage the whole business plan uh, for, for the property. Um, okay, so Jordan is asking, do you have any general thoughts, concerns on going the FHA loan um, route? Um, so with FHA, we don't have FHA in, in multifamily or commercial, so that's specific to residential properties, so it would not apply in, in commercial, unfortunately. Um, any other questions, anybody? Feel free put, to put them in the chat. But again, if you're interested in seeing future deal flow and any deals that I'm investing in myself, deals that we're putting out to investors, um, I highly recommend you make an account. Again, it's completely free and you're gonna get to see future deals that we have. So you go to this website, you click on create investor account right there. And then you just put in your name, email, phone number, are you accredited or not? Um, if you don't know, just put no, I guess. Um, and then if you're a US citizen, um, how much are you planning on investing? Again, this is not a commitment. That's just a simple question. You could choose whatever. Um, how did you hear about us? In this case, it would be a webinar, you know, whatever. So just post a webinar. That's it. And then that's it. You join, you get to see deals. If we have a deal that you're interested in, we give you priority um, in investing. So that way, if you're interested in joining, you get to invest prior to anybody else. How does equity on the property work? Uh, so what we do, Vivian, 
is we buy these deals and our focus is when we buy the deals is we want to increase your appreciation we want to give you cash flow and then we want to give you deductions so we take these deals and then we basically spend money on the rehab so that the property value would hopefully go up so we rehab the property increase the income increase the rent reduce the expenses so that way the value goes up i hope that answers your question um, is this similar to arrived? I don't know what arrived is to be honest with you. So I'm not, I'm not sure how to answer that. Um, yeah, but basically the model with this is, is we buy these multifamily properties, we manage them for everybody and you just kind of sit back and you get cash flow, you get deductions. And then when we sell the deal, you get your appreciation as well on the back end because we're, we're basically focused on increasing the asset value. Um, okay, Dee's asking, what is your opinion on the recent changes in financial climate, loan rates, inflation in the US? How has that impacted your recent deals? Has there been any change in your strategy due to this? Um, Dee, great question. So in the beginning of this year, the first six months, I looked at about 400 deals, uh, both online and in person. And out of these 400 deals, I literally couldn't buy a single one, zero, because everything was way overpriced. People were writing insanely high offers. And so I had to stay out of the market. So since then, when interest rates went up, the market adjusted down. And so the same assets that are being sold right now, say for 10 million, back in the day, six, seven, eight, nine months ago, would have sold for probably $12 million, $13 million, because the the interest rates increasing have reduced values but the asset itself is producing the same or even higher income and so in my opinion the first six months didn't buy anything i thought it was a terribly overpriced market i had a lot of investors that were you know asking hey boss why are you not bringing anything to invest in and i i just couldn't find any deals i'm like i i'm looking at deals they're just not good deals so i'm not going to buy them but then since then in my opinion, now is probably the best time to be investing because a lot of buyers are sitting on the sidelines. They're too worried. And then asset prices have already gone down. Income is going up. And so I'm just trying to buy as much as possible, but being super careful. We're not using high leverage. Our leverage on deals right now is usually between 50 to 65 percent. I want to be low leverage. I want cash flow day one. So that way we're not buying a property that you know, might not have any cash flow for a year. So I want cash flow day one. So we're being very specific, but in my opinion, the same deal that you would buy today for 10 million would have been an extra 2 million, $3 million just a few months ago. So I'm going all in. You know, if you look at Warren Buffett, Warren Buffett says when stocks, when stocks go down, you buy more stocks. It's kind of like groceries. When the groceries go down in price, you don't stop buying groceries, you go buy more groceries. And so to me, this is very similar. Uh, what does the typical cash flow look like? So typically in a deal, it's about five to 6% um, in cash flow a year. Um, in some cases it might be higher, but usually about five to 6%. So if you put in a hundred thousand and it's 6%, that means you'd get about $6,000 a year that gets divided on a monthly basis. So you get, you know, you get every month you get cash flow. Um, but then the majority of your income is made on the back end. So just to give you an example, if you're getting $6,000 a year, uh that's over 12 months that's about 500 dollars a month in passive income so if you have a hundred thousand to invest in the deal cash flow is at six percent that's 500 dollars a month in passive income now a hundred thousand dollars in the bank right a hundred thousand dollars in the bank right now inflation is at 7.7 percent so per year uh you're losing 7,700. if you take that over 12 months that means per month you were losing $641 in, in inflation right now in the bank. So, you know, that's why I would say cash is probably not a good idea right now because of inflation. If, if people ran the numbers and realize that on $100,000, they're paying basically $641 just to keep it in the bank, I think a lot more people would start investing. Um, so, I, you know, I would say just kind of think about inflation, cash flow, Five to six percent is great, but then the majority of the upside is also made on the back end. Uh, what's the how? What's the return we can expect? So you know, every deal is different right now. Um, whenever I'm doing a deal, I want I want to be able to double investors' money in three to five years. So let's say it's five years, right? So five years, and let's say we're looking for deals that could double your money. That's usually kind of like my minimum requirement. So that means you get a hundred percent return in five years. 
So if you divide that by five, that means annualized, that's 20% a year. Five to 6% might come in cash flow, and then the remaining is, is on the back end when we sell the deal. If you compare this to the stock market, the stock market gives you 7%, 8%. This year it's down so far about 29% year to date. So Bitcoin is down 70% or 75%, something like that. So in real estate, is a much safer investment opportunity and and the returns are much higher as well than a typical year in the stock market uh so lomash is asking how many did you buy so far and how many of them have you sold so far so we haven't sold any yet i started investing first passively two years ago and then i started actively buying about a year and a half ago uh, by the end of this year we'll own about 350 units roughly I'm just, you know, I'm very picky about which properties I buy and what deals I invest in because I don't have to buy. I'm just buying the right deals because I'm interested in investing myself. And so um, do you have any examples of losses so far? So we haven't lost money on any property. The properties that we have bought, I'll give you an example. The first one I bought just this year alone, we've increased our net operating income of the deal by 40%. Um, another deal that we bought, that $30 million deal, we're projected to exceed our projections within one year of owning it. We've already went over the rent projection, so we haven't lost money. We've exceeded our projections on both deals that we bought last year um, in the market. Uh, let's see, it's very hard. You know, you could lose money in multifamily. You could lose money in real estate. But if you buy right, if you buy in the right location, you buy in the right market, it's very hard to lose money unless you mess it up or you buy an asset that's just not stabilized, an asset that requires you know, a lot of work where things could go wrong. It's, it's typically difficult to lose money. That doesn't mean you can't, you could lose money, but it's typically harder to lose money. Any other questions, post them in the chat. Um, what kind of documents on the property would I receive after investing? So if you invest in a property, you would get basically the financials every month. So you see what's going on with the property every single month. Uh, we send out the financials and I also send out the checks every single month so, or ACH, whatever you prefer, right? So you get monthly cash flow, you get a monthly report from us. So if, if you invest in a deal, I'll tell you every month what's going on with the deal, what improvements we've made, what's been happening. Uh, I'll show you charts of the income, charts of the expenses and, and all these different things, what we've done versus what we you know, projected we would do. And then you'll also get all the financials. So it's, you know, bank accounts, you get the profit and loss statements, you get the rent roll, you get the T12, the whole thing. Absolutely, D, I appreciate you joining. Um, so if you guys have any questions, post them in the chat. Uh, for the property, what's the percentage of GP? What's the percentage of LP? So Joe, good question. It really depends on a deal per deal basis. Usually we offer a 7% pref. So meaning up until 7%, up until you get at least 7% a year, we make nothing on the back end. Um, and then after a 7%, it becomes a 70-30 split. And then after if after I get you to minimum of 15%, then it becomes a 50-50 split. So so usually unless we make you 7% a year, we don't even make any, we don't even take any cut from the back end of the profits. It all goes to you until you hit 7% usually. And then it becomes, like I said, a 70-30 split on anything above that first 7%. To do, to do, to do, to do. Any other questions? Anybody have any other questions? Post them in the chat. If you don't have questions and you're interested in signing up, uh, do GPs invest in the property as well? Yes, every single deal we invest in the deal. Every single one. There's no exception to that. Uh, because everybody wants to know that you've got skin in the game. If you tell people, hey, I'm buying this deal and uh, it's the greatest deal on the planet and you're not putting any money in, then people get suspicious. So we put money into every single deal. Usually we're the biggest investors in every deal uh what's your percentage of your investment minimum 10 percent of what the equity is so if we're buying a deal and we need six million dollars we will minimum at a minimum invest 600 in many cases it's usually closer to the 20 percent mark or even higher but at a minimum it's it's usually 10 percent Any other questions? Uh, how long does it take to start receiving cash flow after the deal is closed? Um, good question, Vivian. I target two months, uh, but I set a limit of six months, meaning I want it to be for sure within six months, you want to start getting the cash flow. But usually um, my target is to start sending you um, cash flow within two months of owning the property. So if you if we close on a deal right now, 
then I want you to start getting paid in February and then you get paid every month afterwards. Great question. It's a great stream of income. I mean, look, if you've got 100,000 sitting in the bank doing nothing, that's costing you $640 a month in inflation. Um, so you could invest it, get that cash flow instead, you know, have a second source of income basically. If you have 200,000 all of a sudden, now that's that's $1,000 a month. If you invest half a million, all of a sudden that's, you know, whatever whatever that is, uh, $2,500 a month. So, so, you know, it's just, it's a great source of income. It's completely passive. Um, Joe's asking, can you give an example? If I invest 100,000, what can I expect? Sure, I'll show you an example of that right now. So this is, I guess, a whiteboard. Uh, let me see, there we go. So let's say you invest 100,000, right? 100K. Um, on that 100K, let's say there is year one, right? Year one, year two, year three, year four, because we, we like to keep them between three to five years, so year five. So maybe year one, you're gonna get maybe about 4% in cash flow. It, it, it should average out to about five to six, but let's say because it's the first year, we're renovating the property, we're increasing the income. So let's say you, you get 4%. Maybe the second year, you're gonna get uh, you know 5% in cash flow. And I'm gonna put these into, so that would be about say 4K, 4K a year, or let's say $4,000 a year, right? Uh, let's do this, I'm gonna expand that. So cash flow, so that would be, again, that would be about $5,000 a year. And then maybe it goes up to 5.5% in cash flow. Then it might go up to 6% in cash flow. And then it might go up to 7% in cash flow. Um, and so the way that works is if you're getting $5,000 a year, right? That would be, what is that? I'm bad with math. Let's say $450 a month, I don't know. Let's say $450 a month. Per month. So that's all in the cash flow, right? This is the cash flow. But then when we sell the deal, you also, you know, if we're expecting to double your money, right? We want to double your money. Again, there is no guarantee, but we want to double your money. So that means your 100,000 should turn into 200,000, right? Including all the cash flow that you got. So maybe you got 4,000, 5,000, you got, you know, whatever. Maybe you got, um, let's say, $40,000 in cash flow. Well, to double your money, it's $60,000 more. That's, that comes from the appreciation at sale. So that's how that would work. You get money in cash flow, and then the, the remaining you get basically, uh, let's put this as cash flow. Uh, the remaining you get at sale, and then you get, you know, your $100,000 uh, initial investment back. There you go. So that's, that's kind of how it works. So you get cash flow and then when we sell you get appreciation if if everything goes as planned and then you get the initial investment back uh what's what's your background if we may know sure so i was uh i was a residential real estate agent and then i became a residential broker i was top 50 agents nationwide with remax i had a team of 25 um, full-time virtual assistants we we're doing a lot of uh, real estate sales in the bay area and I grew the business I, you know, very quickly in four and a half years. From there on, I basically was paying a lot of money in taxes. I had, I had about a million dollars in the bank just sitting in cash and it, it drove me crazy. I'm like, what do I invest in? I don't wanna do single family houses. I didn't wanna do stocks. I didn't wanna do crypto. And so I started investing in multifamily because I needed to invest my own cash. So, you know, I started investing two years ago and then it was, I just figured out how great it was. We were getting cash flow. I was getting appreciation, obviously, and then I was saving a lot of money in taxes. And so as a result of that, I decided to exit my sales business and then just focus on buying multifamily deals. And so that's, that's all I do now. Um, how long have you been in Dallas? So I live in the Bay Area. And so my partner lives in Dallas. But yeah, I've been investing in Dallas for about two years now. And so I track, I have another webinar on how to choose markets. You could watch that. But on that webinar, you could see why we select the different markets. I like, I like Dallas, I like Nashville, I like Phoenix and Tucson. Um, although Phoenix and Tucson tend to kind of go down a lot in the recession, so it worries me. And so I, I kind of stay out of that market for right now. Uh, Florida, I really like as well. But Florida, you know, you've got the hurricane issues, you've got the, all these different things. Insurance is very expensive, so I, I try to stay out. Uh, Joe, uh, Texas does have very high property taxes. I agree with that. But that's all factored into our business plan. So if I'm buying a deal, I contact a property tax consultant, you know, an attorney and say, hey, listen, we're buying this deal. 
how much do you expect the taxes to be in this first year, the second year, the third year, the fourth year, whatever. And so they give us those numbers. And so all of our projections are based on the fact that taxes are going to increase because it's just part of the part of the business plan. But yeah, very, very good point. There is no perfect market. There's always ups and downs, ups and downs in everything we do. Right. Uh, but that's just it's just part of it. Do, 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 do. Any other questions, anybody? By the way, I wanted to ask, what time is your preferred uh, time for these webinars? We do this every single week. We had a different webinar about a different topic. It's completely free every time. Um, I could either do it at 5 o'clock in the evening. I could do it at 11 o'clock in the morning, right, right before um, lunch. Or I could do it at 1 o'clock, right after lunch. What do you guys prefer? If anybody has any advice, I would love to hear your feedback. This is the first time we do... Uh, evening and I hope I'm not low energy because I've been working a lot throughout the day so let me know what your thoughts are 5 p.m. works you think Jordan that's awesome I was thinking that because a lot of people get off work and all that sort of stuff okay so you know I I'll, I'll do another I'll do a few more that are at 5 p.m. so you know see kind of what the turnout is um, obviously the turnout on this one has been great and uh, so let's let's you know we'll keep doing that that's perfect so for those of you that are still on, make that account modelequity.com forward slash invest now uh, right there. And, uh, you know, once you make an account, like I said, you're, you're going to start to see future deals. Uh, Joe, the way you get future webinars is if you signed up for this one, then you're going to get notified of every single webinar in the future. Um, so you're going to get that through email. So just kind of keep looking out for my emails. I have two different brands, Model Equity, that's the multifamily investing brand, and then Multifamily Investor Tribe, uh, that's the education, uh, free, free education brand, so we educate people for free. That's called Multifamily Investor Tribe. This is Model Equity, that's where I actually invest money into deals, that's where we source deals for our investors. So just kind of look for emails from both Model Equity and Multifamily Investor Tribe. Um, yeah, we actually do in-person events. I haven't done one in about two months or three months. I plan to. I'm located in, in California. Um, so, you know, it might, I don't know if where you're located, but we used to host an event every single month. Yeah, I mean, the weekly one is every single, every single week. So that's, that's there. Oh, you live in Texas. Okay. So yeah, I mean, you know, I, I think at some point, most likely next year, I'll host like a two day or a three day kind of summit in Texas at some point in Dallas specifically. Um, so stay tuned for that one. But in the meantime, obviously, we've got the weekly webinars. So I hope these are helpful. You know, I mean, like I said, I put a lot of time, you know, just to educate people, I, I, I had to learn a lot of these things the hard way. And so if I could save you, you know, a few months of work with just a webinar, you know, I, I hope it's helpful. But again, sign up on that website. So that way you can see deals. Do you do any financing if you have enough money from LPs? Um, yeah, we still finance, you know, we, we don't want to be over leveraged on deals. Like if I'm buying a deal, I don't want to be getting an 80% loan because that's too high of a leverage right now. So uh, we still get financing 50 to 65%, you know, because you always want to use leverage safely. So that way you increase the, the returns for the investors. If you buy all cash, it's usually it's harder to maximize returns. But you don't want to be over leveraged, especially in this market. I'm still seeing people that go and they get multiple different loan products and they try to maximize. It's like, this is not the right time to be maximizing. You want to be safe. You want to make sure that you're, you know, you've got enough equity. So that way, if, if things go south or whatever it is, you're not, you don't have a huge loan and, and you don't lose the property. So I always have low leverage and I always have a lot of reserves in every deal, enough reserves to cover six months to a year of expenses. Anyway, cool. Well, I don't want to keep you guys up all night. I'm going to wrap this up. Again, if you're interested in seeing future deals that we have, if you're interested in an ebook on how to buy multifamily real estate, make sure you sign up on that website, modelequity.com forward slash invest. And I will see you all on the next one. Thank you so much for being here.